Hi, my name is Manuel from Maxon, and I want to introduce you to the new features of Cinema 4D R20. A new addition to Cinema 4D Release 20 is Fields. And Fields is a new way of defining falloffs. We used to use falloffs with effectors with MoGraph. So if we quickly create a MoGraph setup, just throw a cube into a cloner, set the cloner to grid array, let's say make 10 by 10 clones, and let's scale down the cube. You are used to creating a effector, say a plane effector, and drop this effector here into the effectors list and it will affect the clones and move them upwards. If you now go to the plane effector, you have this falloff tab as before, but it looks entirely different. Instead of defining the falloff directly, you get this list field here waiting for fields, and fields are new. What fields is, it's decoupling the falloff from the effector object. So instead of defining the falloff for this particular effector, we now can define global falloffs, and we can use them anywhere inside of Cinema 4D. One way to create a falloff field is to go to this menu here beneath this box and just create, for example, a spherical field. This will create this entry in the list, and at the same time it will create a field object, a new purple field object, the spherical field. This spherical field is a child of the plane effector, so it moves with the plane effector. That means the behavior is pretty much as before. If I move the effector, the field moves with it, and the falloff changes. But don't get confused, the falloff is generated by this field now. So this purple field object is generating the falloff, and I can take it out of the plane effector and move it around on its own. So now the plane effector is sticking here in the middle, but the field is moving. So you might ask, why is this good? This is good because now you can use multiple fields as a falloff input for one effector. So I can create a second field, say a linear field, like this, and you see that both fields affect the same effector. The linear field is adding this pink color, the other one is adding this green color, and both affect the falloff. So I have this linear falloff here combined with the spherical falloff. And here in my list, I have now this linear field on top of my spherical field, and I have this blending dropdown. And this blending dropdown tells how to composite those falloffs so to speak. At the moment it's set to max, and that means that the falloff that is used is always the maximum of the spherical field or the linear field. So whenever the linear field has a higher value than the spherical field, this one is used. But if the spherical field has a higher value, the spherical field is used. I can use different blending operations, so I can set this to min, for example. Then it always uses the minimum, or I can set it to multiply then the effect of the linear field multiplies the spherical field. Or I can set it to overlay, then it only alters the spherical field where both fields exist. So you see that you have a lot of options here to compose the effect of these two fields. What's new too is that fields can not only define a float falloff, but it, they can define a color too. And in this list you have these two icons here indicating what the fields are adding. This wave icon is defining the value and this color triple here is defining the color. So if I turn this off you see that I now only get the value. If I turn the value off too the fields really are adding nothing. Or I can add only the color. So I can decide what exactly the fields are affecting. The value, the color, or both. If I go to the field itself, I have quite some options here to work with this field. For now, let's get rid of the linear field and stick to the spherical field. Maybe we create some more clones to make this more visible. Let's say 30, and let's scale down the cube a little more, like so. 
And before I continue, I want to hint at yet another addition to the new release, and that is a new instance mode called multi-instance, and it will make instancing so much faster than before. So as soon as I switch to multi-instance, everything is very snappy and fast, as you can see here. Okay, so I have this field here. And this field has controls that are familiar from before. You have this inner radius and you have the outer radius. But now that you have a field, you can do more. You can add remapping to this value range here. So you can define the strengths, you can define the inner offset, you can define the minimum value and the maximum value, and you can go here to the contour and change this to, say, curve, and then you have very granular control over the fall of curve. And not only do you see the effect here in the viewport, but at the same time, Max had introduced this preview graphic here that exactly shows you the fall of curve in a 2D cross section. But what exactly are fields doing? I created a spherical field myself here. It looks a little technical, and that is because I want to explain to you what exactly is happening under the hood. I created this sphere, and that is, so to speak, my field. And these red numbers show you the dimensions of this sphere. So in the middle, I have zero, and at the outer radius, I have 100. So the distance between the center of this sphere and the outer radius is exactly 100. I can change this here, of course making the sphere bigger, and you see that this value changes too. But let's stick to 100 for now. And now I have a sample point. I created this null object, and this null object is one of my clones. And it wants to know the fall of value at exactly this location. And what it does is it samples the field. So it looks at the field and calculates the distance from itself to the center of the field. That is this green line here. And the distance at the moment is 68.756. And then it remaps this distance to a range between 0 and 1. So whenever this distance is 0, the output value that I have here at the top is 0 to, more or less. And if this distance is 100, the output value will be 1. If the distance is bigger, the output value will be higher, but you can clamp that, so you can say whenever this value is higher than 1, stick to 1. And like this, the field computes a value, a fall of value, for all locations in 3D. So wherever this clone exists, it exactly knows which fall of value it has. And this fall of value is defined globally by the geometry of the field. So if I move this sphere around, you see that the fall-off changes, because the distance changes. So it's a relative thing. The location of the clone relative to the field's geometry defines the fall-off value. And that is exactly what happens inside of a spherical field. So fields are global fall-off geometries, basically. They define a function in 3D space, generating a value between 0 and 1. Separating fields from the effectors has a lot of benefits. Like before, you can define falloffs for effectors using fields, but now you can do more things with it. Because they are now individual objects, they can be used to affect different things inside of Cinema 4D. Like, for example, this vertex map here. If I make this vertex map on this plane visible and move the field over, you see that I now have in the vertex map a field tab and inside a field list. And this field list will happily evaluate the global field function to set the values of the vertex map. Very handy. But it does not end here. You can define a vertex color tag and this vertex color tag has an added fields tab 2, so you can define the color of a vertex color tag using fields. At the moment I'm using black and white, but you can set any color you like. Then of course you can use fields to give falloffs to deformers. So all the deformers can use fields. With the addition of volumes inside of Cinema 4D, you can now use fields to create volumes. 
So I have here a volume builder, and in the volume builder I dragged in the field, and it happily creates a volume from this field, and then creates a mesh from the volume. So I can use the same field to create a deformation or a volume. And then, last but not least, I can create selections from fields. If I have a selection tag like this one here that sets a point selection, I can click Use Fields, get this field list here, drag in a field, and if I double click this now, you see that the points get selected if they exceed a certain threshold in the field. You have here this tolerance slider, with this you can say which points get selected. So you now have a way of procedurally selecting points, polygons or edges using fields. So as you can see, you now have a lot of different ways to use fields. Instead of just using them inside of effectors, you can use them for a lot of different things. And you can use exactly the same field for all these things at the same time. So you can, for example, generate web maps, or you can create geometry with a volume and then have little particles fly out of this geometry with a cloner, because you can reuse the field for all these different effects. Cinema 4D comes with quite a bunch of fields here. Many different geometric shapes and other things like shader fields or even sound fields. But you can not only use these fields that you find here, but you can use objects as fields. And that is what I'm doing here. What I have here is a plane. And this plane has a vertex map. And on the vertex map, I checked use fields, and thus I get this field tab here with a field list, and I just dragged in this M geometry. So let me quickly redo it. If I delete it here, make this one here invisible for a second. If I drag this in, I get this M geometry as a field. And if I now click this field, I get controls. At the moment, it's at the points, so it creates a field from the points of the object. But I instead want to use the surface. And as soon as I do this, I get a gradient falloff around the object, around the intersection of the object and the vertex map. So if I make this bigger, you see, now I have this very nice falloff ramp. So the object is defining a field. And I use the same approach here with this plane. I created this plane vector and set it to deformer. So I set deformation to point. And then with the falloff tab, I used this object here as a falloff. If I quickly turn off the formula, you don't see much. It's just a very slight bulge because that is the value range that is created from the field. And now that I have this list here, I can do different operations to this fall of value, and I chose to use this formula layer. And this formula layer affects everything that is beneath it, like in 2D applications like Photoshop. And if I click the formula layer, I put in this formula. So I'm doing a sign of subfields, and subfields is just the value that comes from beneath. So subfield is a value that is generated by this M field. And that I do the sine of this. I multiply it with 360 because sine takes in degrees. It is a trigonometric function. And then I multiply it with f. And what is f? If you open up this variable drop down here, you have an explanation of all the variables you can use. And f is just a frequency. And that is very handy because then you can use this slider here to change the frequency and have an interactive control to change the effect. So the higher the frequency, the more ripples you generate. Let's go back to 10. And by doing this remap operation with the formula, I generate different values for the falloff, and thus the deformer creates these nice ripples. And of course, everything is live. As soon as I go to my M character and rotate it, move it around, it generates these ripples through the field in every frame. So it's perfectly animatable. Now that we have fields, even effects that have been very complicated to do before are easy. What I did here is I created a plane with a particle system that has rain particles fall down and then collide with the sphere here. That is a straightforward thinking particle setup that looks like this. So I just generate 
particles on the surface of this object and then I have a gravity pulling them down and a deflector making them collide with a sphere. But the nice thing is that I put a vertex map on this sphere and in the vertex map I again checked use fields and then I dragged in the all group of thinking particles. And what that gives me is a field defined by particles. So now the particles are carrying a little field with them and as soon as they collide with this vertex map or with this sphere, they generate a fall of value in the vertex map. That is really nice. But not only that, now that I have this stack of operations here with the fields, I can add a decay layer. And the decay layer is a special effect that makes the value of the field beneath decay over time. So if I click this, I now have the raindrops drawing on the surface of the sphere because the values are now decaying over time. So I can very easily create a wet map on the sphere using particles as rain. And if you ask me, I think that is really great because these fields are very powerful and makes Cinema 4D so much more fun. So I hope you are as excited with fields as I am and have fun with the new release of Cinema 4D.